Hello and welcome back to the Hairy Housewife YouTube channel. And today we're going to see can you wash your car without access to electric and water. Hello and welcome back. And that is right. I've gone from inside a vehicle to inside my office. Now, the reason being, when I filmed this video, I did it all outside like I used to do. Sound quality was awful, wind noise, all sorts. I couldn't put you guys for that. I love you too much. So I decided to cut all that out and get inside the office and film in here. Now, I was set a challenge by Valent Supplies. Can you wash a car without electric and hose pipe? Now, this would be an ideal test if you live in a tower block and you haven't got access to a long extension lead and access to water. If you were on the road on the way to a car show, if you were at a car show, like I am going to be in this video. So look, I decided to take the challenge on and I decided to do it while I was on the way to Waxstock. Now, I got about 10 miles away from Waxstock. I pulled over in a lay-by and I was like, this is the perfect place to do it. I was on a private road in a private lay-by. So I did do this a little bit quicker than I probably wanted to, but I didn't really fancy get someone to come tell me off. So I pulled over in a lay-by, I jumped out and I prepared the car for the wash, I got everything out and we were ready to go. So I started off with a pre-wash spray on the lower half of the vehicle because from the bottom half up wasn't too bad. The car's only covered probably about four or 500 miles since I previously washed it, so it wasn't too bad. So if you were doing this um, to wash your car on a weekly basis or maybe monthly basis, then you probably wanna spend a little bit more time on the washing stage and given a little bit more of a going over. However, the car wasn't too bad. This video is just to show that you can do it. So we started off with iDetail Pro pre-wash spray in a pump sprayer, sprayed it all around the bottom half of the vehicle. Now I'm not gonna bore you with every single little process of this washing stage. You just need to see what I'm doing. I'm not gonna show you me going around the whole vehicle and then making it dwell. I'm just gonna show you the process I have gone through. So again, this is a pre-wash spray going on. The pre-wash spray has gone on nicely. I'm going to let that dwell for about two to three minutes. You don't want to sit on your paintwork too long. And then we're going to go over with a snow foam. A snow foam. How are you going to snow foam without a pressure washer? I'll tell you. Now, I'm sure some of you have got this in your arsenal. If you haven't already, it is an IK foamer. You can get bigger ones. You can get better ones. I've only got the little one and it does the job for what I need. I don't use it very often. However, for this, it is perfect. Now, I will go through at the end and top up the cost of everything that I've used so you guys can see how much it would cost you to wash your car in a similar situation. So as I'm going around a vehicle with that IK Foamer, I am going around with Apple iFoam from Dodo Juice. That is a pH neutral snow foam. It is a fantastic, fantastic snow foam. And I'm going to let that dwell for around about four to five minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm sort of setting up for the next stage of the wash. Again, this is a fantastic pH neutral snow foam. I've done a video on it. Go check it out. Now it's time for my secret weapon. You're probably sitting there thinking, how are you going to rinse that off? How are you going to rinse that snow foam off? I'm going to show you. Now, I was very smug when I bought this. Now, I'm going to let myself on site talk you through it. So this is my secret weapon. It is a green waste portable pressure washer. Now, it's not like those ones where you have a battery on the handle and you pop the hose into a, like, a bucket. This is a proper little pressure washer that you fill up with water. It's got a battery in here. You pop this bad boy in, like so, turn it on, and away you go. Wait, what about water? I'm sure someone's sitting there thinking, where are you going to get water from, mate? You're having a laugh. I am not. So if you lived in a tower block, you'd have water in your apartment. You could fill your buckets up, you could fill a container up, and you could bring it downstairs to your vehicle. If you are on the road like me, all I've done is I've nipped to Tesco's. Now I bought these, but you could fill up containers. I bought the five litre bottles of water and I got about eight of those. Now this pressure wash takes about 30 litres. I'm putting five litres in at a time. I've only got eight, so I've got 40 litres of water with me. And it sort of started to dawn on me when I was doing this, what if I need more water? However, you'll see that I had plenty with me. So I've popped a five litre drum in the pressure washer and away we go. Now, when I started using this, I'm gonna be honest with you, I started to think this pressure washer doesn't have the oomph for what I need it to. 
and I was rinsing the snow foam off it, and I was slightly disappointed, thinking, this is advertised as 70-bar pressure washer. Now, those little ones where you get the hose that you stick in a bucket and pop a battery on that look like a drill, they're only 40-bar. This is meant to be 70-bar, and I was like, a little bit disappointed with this. Um, but I went round and rinsed the whole car off, the snow foam, and got it all off without any hassle whatsoever with this pressure washer. Now, it wasn't until I finished pressure washing the vehicle, I noticed the head on the lance was fully adjustable, and you could adjust the pressure, and I had it set to minimum. So I'd only just rinse that snow foam off on minimum pressure. So we'll see how good the 70 bar pressure is a little bit later on. And now we move on to the hand contact wash stage. Now, again, like the pressure washer, all I've done is I've emptied some of those pre-bought containers of water into my buckets, getting in with the pressure washer, foaming that shampoo up nicely. Now, I'm not going to bore you with me washing the whole vehicle. I'm just going to put a little montage of me together of washing the vehicle, just so you don't sit there thinking, come on, mate, hurry up, get on with it. And that's it. That is the vehicle given a nice hand wash with Dodo Juice, Born to be Mild, cracking shampoo. If you haven't used it, I suggest checking it out. It's a fantastic pH neutral shampoo that's got inhibitors in it. So if you live in a hard water area, it makes that water feel so much nicer in your sponge and on the vehicle. Now we move on to rinsing the vehicle off. Now the pressure washer is set at 70 bar and you can see there is a lot more pressure than there was when I was rinsing that snow foam off. And again, not going to bore you with the whole process. I'm going to eight times speed it so you don't sit there thinking again, hurry up mate, get on with it. Now as you can see, as I'm rinsing this vehicle off, the pressure washer isn't that heavy. I'm walking around with it in my hand. Again, this is 70 bar of pressure. Those little handheld ones you get, around about 40 bar. So this is a banging little pressure washer. Now I have used a little bit more water rinsing off the shampoo and the dirt. I popped in around about 10 liters this time. So that was five liters to get rid of the pre-wash and the snow foam, 10 liters to get rid of the shampoo and the excess dirt. There was 10 liters in my rinse bucket and there was 15 liters in my shampoo bucket. And that is a total of 40 liters. Now that is all I took with me, eight bottles of five liter water. So I'm glad that's all it took. I've done it with absolute ease. The pressure washer was light enough to walk around the vehicle with. It did a fantastic job. And now I'm going to move on and I'm dry that vehicle. I'm going to show you what it looks like once the vehicle is dry. And I'm using my Dodo Juice drying towel. Again, you don't need to see me drying the whole vehicle. You just need to see each stage that I have done to get the vehicle to where I want it. So I have dried it with my Dodo Juice drying towel. And that is it, guys. Now, I was going to drive it to wax stock to get rid of any excess water that the drying towel hadn't picked up. And then I was going to hit it with a quick detailer. I was only about four or five miles away, maybe 10 at the most. So it wouldn't have been too bad. You wouldn't be picking up any real road grime or dirt. However, by the time I got there, it had hammered it down with rain in a space of sort of 10, 15 minute journey. There had been dirt flicked up the car, been dirt flicked up the vehicle, and it was still raining when I got there. So I thought, there's no point. I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to show you the photo now of the vehicle just to show you it was clean. And also, now the vehicle is dry, I just want to show you a little something now. I just want to show you how well these products and the hardware has worked. Look at my drying towel. There's not a single spot of dirt on that drying towel, which shows everything I've done has cleaned that vehicle like I wanted it to. Now, the vehicle is clean, as you can see. Again, I didn't get a chance to hit with a quick detail. Now, if you were doing this at home, maybe at an apartment or on a way to a car show, you'd be able to just hit it with a quick detailer and get that nice, glossy finish that you are after and that's proof guys that is proof you don't need to have access to a hose pipe you don't need to have access to electricity you could do it with just a few items that i have bought and a few fantastic fantastic products now guys let's talk about price so we're going to talk about the hardware not the products because the products you could use any products you want and the products that work for you these are the ones i prefer to use because they work for me so let's jump on to the ik foamer now, the IK Foamer, I've seen these range between $14.99 to £20. So I'm going to put that in at £15. And then we move on to the pressure washer. Now, I got lucky, and I'm very smug about this. I paid £35 for mine. However, if you were to buy one like this, they are around about £149.99 on Amazon. And if you were to buy them from Greenworks itself, they are $179.99. Now, we'll do a review at a later date on this um, just to talk about the battery times and the battery life um, because there is a little bit of an issue there with it for me. However, it did do what I wanted to do with this vehicle and it was a cracking, cracking little pressure wash to use. 
Now, if you were to use one of the smaller ones, the little sort of battery style ones, you can grab one of them for around about £40 up to anywhere again to £200. So this was a cracking little bargain that I got off of Facebook for £35. It pays to shop around. So that is it, guys. Now, I could jump in and start talking about drying towels. I could jump in and start talking about wash mitts and all that malarkey. But you don't need those products specifically if you live in a tower block or you're on a way to a car show. If you're going to wash your vehicle, you would have all those anyway. Again, the same with the products. I could go on and talk about those. But the products I've used, I like those products. You might not. So you'd be using your own products. The only two things I've had to buy for this is an IK Foamer and the Green Works pressure washer. Now, if I do them at retail price, you can do this for around about 160 to 200 pound. And that is it, guys. Now, a good pressure washer. I mean, I paid, I think, about £100 for my pressure washer. A good pressure washer, you could pay anywhere between, say, £69 up to £500. So this isn't bank-breaking stuff. So, guys, if you want to wash your vehicle on the way to a car show, or you live in a tower block and you've got no access to water and electric, then this is quite possibly the way for you. So, guys, I have been the hairy housewife. You guys have been great, and I'll see you all again very soon.